Should you buy the brand new fanless M3 MacBook Air or go for the M3 MacBook Pro? Well, in this video, we're gonna find out by comparing everything, including the designs, the portability, displays, performance, speakers, SSDs, thermals, and more. Now I've got the specs on screen and you can tell that this is the 15 inch MacBook Air for $1,300 and this MacBook Pro starts at $1,600 but it's constantly on sale for $1,400 which makes it a great deal and it has 512 gigs of SSD compared to 256. So if you were to upgrade this model, it would actually be more expensive, $1,500 compared to $1,400. Now you can get the 13 inch model for even less, only $1,100 but it has a small smaller eight core GPU. And of course the screen size is smaller. As you guys can see right here, the difference in screen size is just a little bit bigger with the 14 inch MacBook Pro and a lot bigger with the 15 inch MacBook Air, which is why I'm using this one. Now the 15 inch does have better thermal performance in terms of not thermal throttling as much and better battery life. But other than that, they're basically the same between these two. Now, before we get into the other display differences and performance, I do want to close these down and show you guys the exterior differences. Here you can see that the 15 inch has quite a bit larger footprint, but it actually is a lot thinner. Now in terms of weight, the MacBook Pro is actually a little bit heavier, even though the footprint of the 15 inch is larger. And the thing I really like about the MacBook Air is that it feels really thin. Like the entire thing is thinner than just the bottom portion of the MacBook Pro. So just in your hands, especially when you open it up like this, the bottom section is just impossibly thin. It's just really, really nice, and it's easy to put it into your backpack, and it just feels so much more portable, even though it has the larger 15-inch display. Now, moving on to the ports, they both have MagSafe 3, which is really nice and convenient, and they both have two Thunderbolt ports on the side right here. As you can see, we have the headphone jack on that MacBook Pro, which we actually have on the other side of the MacBook Air. But the best thing about the MacBook Pro is that you also have HDMI and you have an SD card slot, which means you don't have to carry around any adapters, dongles, you don't have to remember it. It's always there, which is so nice. And now let's get into comparing the actual speaker quality because the MacBook Pro has a history of sounding better. So let's compare them. Let me know what you thought down below, but to me, the MacBook Pro is still so much louder in terms of the bass and the high frequencies. Overall, sounds amazing, even though the 15-inch MacBook Air actually has a six-speaker system just like this MacBook Pro, while the 13-inch Air only has four speakers. So even though this is the better Air, it still cannot compete with the MacBook Pro. Now, they both have 1080p webcams. This is the 15-inch Air right here, and it now supports the voice ISO isolation mode for the microphone so it should sound better with less background noise. And this right here is the MacBook Pro and as far as I can tell, the actual image does look a little, little bit different, almost like this has more noise. So for some reason the air looks a little bit better, but you guys let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And now let's get into the display differences because the M3 MacBook Pro actually has three major advantages in terms of the actual display technology. The first one is the brightness of the display because the MacBook Air is limited to 500 nits of brightness while the MacBook Pro does 600 standard when you're just browsing the web and using it like you normally would. The second one is actually the ProMotion technology, which means that the M3 MacBook Pro's display can go up to 120 hertz refresh rate, which means it's buttery smooth when you're browsing the web and just using your Mac like you would through the menus and everything else. While the MacBook Air is always limited and locked to 60 hertz and it can't go down to 24 like the MacBook Pro can when you're watching movies to save battery life. And the third advantage is actually the mini LED technology that you get exclusively on the MacBook Pro. But first, I've gotta show you an awesome new product from our partner, Bet Slumber, who are dedicated to making your life more peaceful by crafting noise reduction products like their new reusable earplugs made for real noise reduction 
option for everything from sleep and your daily commute to concerts and other outdoor activities. They have an ergonomic design for an airy fit weighing only 0.55 grams with an ear pressure equalization feature for a long lasting pain free wearing experience and you can get the Bet Slumber earplugs by using the link in the description below. And now getting back to the third advantage of the display which is the mini LED technology, the M3 MacBook Pro can go up to 1600 nits when viewing HDR and here with this YouTube video you can instantly tell the difference. The MacBook Pro is brighter, the black look darker and deeper, much better contrast, and it just looks so much better overall with the MacBook Air looking kind of really gray and dull in comparison. Just look at this scene right here where you can see just how dark the MacBook Pro looks because it actually uses local dimming zones, so those LEDs are actually completely off pitch black, whereas the entire display on the MacBook Air is all gray, especially when you're looking at night, so this is a huge difference. But if you don't watch a lot of movies or videos on your MacBook, you probably might not notice. And now let's go ahead and get into performance with the first thing I want to test being the SSD speeds. Let's start Blackmagic Disk Test right here. And wow, this is a huge difference in write speed. The M3 MacBook Pro is literally twice as fast as the MacBook Air. 3047 compared to 15. 58, and that's of course because this one comes with a 512 gig SSD right out of the get-go compared to the base 256 gig with the MacBook Air. But as far as the read speeds, they're very, very close. 2875 on the MacBook Pro compared to 2714, and that's actually a good thing because the M2 MacBook Air had an issue where it only had a single NAND chip, which made the read speeds very slow, about 1500, and that impacted everything in terms of the multitasking performance, the SSD swap memory, and the general performance, and now it is completely fixed as we confirmed in a previous video, and now has two NAND chips with the base 256 gig SSD, and of course you can upgrade it to have basically the same speeds with 512. And now let's get into CPU performance using Geekbench 6. They both have the same M3 chip with the same eight gigs of RAM. And there you go, we have our results, and it's basically the same score, about 3100 for single core, which is gonna mean you get very snappy performance with either one, and about 12,000 for multi-core performance as well. So for anything that's quick and snappy, you're gonna have the same performance, no difference at all, which is why we also do our stress tests. But first, I do wanna test the metal graphics performance as well. And look at that, we have basically the same score, about 47,000 metal points. And now moving on, let's do a more realistic gaming test. And now once again, we have basically the same score, about 40, 49 and a half FPS in this quick Wildlife Extreme Unlimited test, which is why we also do this stress test, which is a 20 minute test, which is gonna get these systems nice and hot. Now here we can actually see that the chassis of the MacBook Air starts to heat soak and the score keeps going lower and lower and lower down to a lowest loop score of 5,900 compared to the MacBook Pro, which is still sticking at about 7,900 points. And the stability score that we got was 98% on the MacBook Pro compared to only 73% on the MacBook Air. So basically, over the course of 20 minutes, the MacBook Air starts to really slow down in terms of graphics performance, and that is where you would really want to buy the MacBook Pro if you're doing high-end extended tasks. And now moving back over to the CPU side, we have the new Cinebench 2024, which is gonna run a 10-minute throttling test, which is basically gonna push the CPU to the limit to see how much throttling we get here. Right off the bat, we're already seeing a difference in terms of the wattage with the M3 MacBook Pro still running at higher wattage, about 19, and this thing's already going down a little bit. The temps, massive difference there, 93 degrees on the MacBook Pro, already 102, and you can see it right there, 107 degrees Celsius on the MacBook Air, which is basically the limit that Apple sets. It cannot get hotter than that, and if it does, it starts throttling down the power, which it already is. Right here, you can see 13 watts, Look at this chart right here. Look at this 
little measurement of wattage just going straight down diagonally as it's trying to cool the chip down. And over here on the MacBook Pro, it's staying completely flat. It even went up a little bit higher, and that's because it has the fan with the heat sink attached to it, so it very quickly is able to dissipate that heat, which the MacBook Air cannot do. And now that fan is kicked up on the MacBook Pro, 4,600 RPMs, I still can just barely hear it, and just the performance in terms of wattage is just going on the MacBook Pro. It's been over six minutes now running this test, and I wanna pull out my Seek thermal camera to take a look at what we have right here in terms of temps. Looking at the MacBook Air, it looks like we're at 44 degrees Celsius right there in that hot spot, compared to around 36 degrees Celsius, that is a huge difference in terms of the actual surface temps of these hotspots on both machines, which is why the MacBook Air is cooling itself down so much in terms of cutting the power and sacrificing performance. And there you go, we have our score. We have 577 points for the MacBook Air and 633 points for the MacBook Pro. That's about 9.7% faster over a 10 minute stress test. Now, does that matter? for the MacBook Air? Well, not really, because a lot of people that are going for this MacBook Air, at least in terms of that market, are gonna be doing tasks that are fairly quick, easy, and snappy, like let's say some quick photo editing exports, couple minutes, or a video edit exports, five minutes. You're not really gonna see that big of a difference. Now, the people who are gonna have extended workloads, like gaming for half an hour or hours, that's where you really wanna get the MacBook Pro, where it's gonna sustain the performance, unlike what we saw in 3 d Mark's Wildlife, where it was literally like 25% faster and it throttled a lot on the MacBook Air. That is where the MacBook Air is not really a good choice while being fanless. And now before I give you guys my final thoughts on which one you should be buying in 2024, I do wanna go through the battery life. Looking at the 15 inch MacBook Air, we are left with 57% battery life after a few hours of filming. All in all, we had some active areas and some idle areas as well. That's 57 compared to the MacBook Pro, which is 45%. So look at that. The MacBook Air does have better battery life, even though the actual battery size is smaller, 66.5 watt hours compared to 70 on the 14 inch MacBook Pro. And the reason for that is that we have ProMotion, so higher refresh rate on the MacBook Pro. We have a little bit brighter display, 600 nits instead of 500. And because this thing was throttling down and lowering the power usage, and that also helped with the battery life as well. So in terms of battery, it's definitely the 15 inch that wins. And now with all of that said and done and tested, here are my final thoughts on which one you should be buying. Honestly, with the 14 inch MacBook Pro being on sale for $1,400 right now, and that it comes with the 512 gig included, which means it's gonna be cheaper than $1,500 with this thing similarly spec'd, I would just go for the MacBook Pro. I mean, you get the brighter display, you get 120 hertz Pro Motion, you get the fan to make sure you never have any issues with throttling just in case you do some kind of heavier, longer workloads, and you also get the extra ports, HDMI and SD card slot. Yeah, basically there's no way you can go wrong unless you care more about portability and thinness and weight with that MacBook Air. If that matters more to you than all those other things that I mentioned, then go for the Air. But for me, it's all about that MacBook Pro. So hopefully you enjoyed this video, and if you did, let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below, and definitely get subscribed for more comparisons like this one. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.